You know that some fairy tales contain valuable truth. Such is the case with the legends of King Arthur. In the story, elves forge a sword and they give it the name Excalibur. Well, according to the legend, the sword contains unparalleled powers so that its master could rule the realm unchallenged. But placed in the wrong hands, that same sword would corrupt its owner and lead to evil and tyranny. And since the land was so full of deceitful men, greedy for power, you know, filled with self-interest, the sword was encased inside of a stone, exposing only its handle. And only a man full of justice and humility and the wisdom of a king would be able to pull Excalibur from the stone. He would be a chosen man. So, beginning with the strongest, one by one, men tried to pull the sword from the stone. And one by one, they all failed. At last, a, a poor little orphan boy, the least in all of the kingdom, he, he was the only one who could remove the sword from the stone. And that little orphan boy became known as King Arthur of the realm. Well... Of course, it's only a story, but the truth remains. The most unlikely among us, the least of men, are often the ones that God chooses to be his shepherds. And God gives them the sword of the Spirit and the unparalleled power of the Word of God to restrain the forces of evil and to be God's beacons of truth on this planet. Paul writes of those of us called to ministry by saying, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. I want you to note the word, chosen in the above verse. God has chosen. A position of pastor is never taken or earned. It's a position given by God, but recognized by people. And over time, it's validated by the fruit of the Spirit manifest in those who are called of God. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. Notice two words in that verse, chosen and appointed. Chosen has to do with God's selection, his choice and beckoning to you to come forth from all others, while the word appointed has to do with your position, your appointment, or place of service, and with whom and for what purposes you serve. Simply put, God chooses you from a crowd and appoints you a sphere of influence. You might ask, if I have a desire to pastor people, should I pursue it? And my answer is automatic, absolutely. However, I would also caution you to avoid the two natural inclinations of the flesh, and both involve impatience. The first one, the desire to move too quickly, and the second one, the desire to want ministry easily. God's calling on your life is without repentance, and generally His calling is for a lifetime. It's not like fast food. It may take years for you to discover it in its fullness, and rarely will it come easily. Oh, pastor, be not weary and be not impatient. In this next video, let's, let's explore the question, how do I know if I'm chosen for ministry? And just know, if God has chosen you for ministry, he will be faithful to complete that good work in you. And I'm convinced that there's no greater calling on a man's life than to pastor God's people. And the same God who created the heavens and the earth 
will create your place of service.